Five minutes. Five minutes. I leave my noodles in the freezer for about three minutes. It's so warm. My noodles are melting hot. I don't want to serve hot noodles on a cold plate. If this doesn't cool down in time, my dish would fail. The aioli is basically mayonnaise. So here we go with mayonnaise. I'm going to grab the wasabi. So I'm going to make a wasabi aioli. I can whip it up by hand and get the consistency I want and the flavor I want. Now I'm in business. Two minutes remain. You should be plating. My warm noodles may be pretty bad, but I have to plate. I add my salmon and tuna, then some edamame. Then I sprinkle some black sesame seeds. And last but not least, furikake is a Japanese rice seasoning. It's a kind of like little fish flakes. It gives it flavor you would get from salmon and tuna, but makes it stronger. And it's really good. At my restaurant, I have a couple dishes that we actually smoke. We send it to the table smoking. But now I got to finish everything within the time limit. Let's go, you got it. You got it. Woo! Make it perfect. Five, four, three, two, one. It's banana time for Esty. Step away from the plates. Esty! Chef Esty now able to appreciate a banana with her newly acquired front teeth. <laughs> I'm pretty confident in my dish. It's looking good. The smoke is super thick. I'd put it on the menu, I'd sell it. You know, I'd eat it, I'd order it. I'm happy with this. Okay, chefs, please bring your plates up to the judges. I did my best, but my noodles are very warm, so I'm worried they're gonna stick together. Chef Esty, please explain your dish. This is my tuna and salmon poke served on top of soba noodles with a creamy sesame sauce. Uh-oh. No, they're gonna ding her on that because they're all stuck together. My noodles are all stuck together. That's no good. Chef Esty, on your dish, I really like the creamy sauce, sesame seeds, and I also liked the flavor of the noodles themselves. Uh, really balanced well and made it taste delicious. But unfortunately, I think as a whole, if you had more finesse, the dish wouldn't be as clunky as it is. The noodles themselves wouldn't be stuck together. You need to pay more attention to the details that you're doing. Esty, I like the idea of you combining the salmon with the tuna. So you had two different flavors of fish, two different textures of fish. Uh, and I also really liked your noodle salad. Thank you. Overall, you know, the dish had flaws throughout it. Uh, some of the noodles were sticking together, the way the fish were cut. I mean, I had big chunks of salmon like this. Chewing on raw fish, when you get big chunks like that, is not always a pleasant feeling in your mouth. You want everything to be balanced and to be even. I've seen better food from you. I want better food from you. This is not good. I agree with my knife cuts being big on the fish. I was stressed in the kitchen, and maybe it was a mistake to go that far out of the box. Chef Drew, please explain your dish. Uh, what I prepared for you today is a smoked poke with crispy ginger chips. Some manual labor involved. That's cool. That actually is awesome. They seem to really like yours. I hope they do. Chef Drew, I think that everything uh, married well. You had a really nice marinade for the fish itself. I liked the, the texture of the seaweed on the bottom. I thought that that added another layer of flavor to your dish. What didn't work for me is uh, the actual temperature of the fish. I know that you smoked it, so it added a, a slight bit of heat to it. And I think that if you had a nice cold fish, it would have been uh, a little bit less overpowering. Chef Drew, I really enjoyed your dish. I like the smoke when you open it up at the table. You can smell it, you can see it, you're getting the people involved. With that being said, I really didn't enjoy the size of the tempura in the ginger. I had to like kind of move that out of the way or pull it out, and I couldn't really enjoy everything together, so it was a little bit harder for me to eat. Smaller cuts would have made it a better dish. I definitely agree with the criticism given me. It should have been colder. I should have made it where they could actually have every component on that fork. I wasn't thinking. You gave us two spectacular dishes. Please give us a moment to discuss. His dish looks so much more like the thing you'll find in a restaurant, and mine looks like a thing where you find in like a small diner. But it tasted good, so I could still win on flavor. Wow, <sighs> this is really tense. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I won this round with my dish alone and the experience I put into it. But 
you know, who? All right, Mike, Alia, who is the winner of round one? The winner is... Chef Drew. Thank you. Chef Drew, you had a nice presentation. I like the layers that you have with the seaweed on the bottom. Really reminded me of being back in Hawaii. I won this round because of my experience. Maybe the momentum will keep going. Nice job, Chef. Thank you. I tried my hardest, and it's kind of upsetting. I didn't get the menu board for my team. Congratulations, Chef Drew. Thank you. You have 45 minutes to see who's got the best boil. And your time starts now. Right away, I run up and grab some of the best crawfish I can find, some corn, some andouille sausage. I have made a boil before, but I want to think it's sort of a seafood stew. This is one of my favorite dishes to make, is a boil. But I'm going to make it more like a chowda meets a stew. I'm going to kick it up a little bit with peppers, a little bit of garlic. I'm going to take down Chef Savon. Chef Savon gave me cold-blooded because he's a cold-blooded Grinch. Since I have to use the frozen crawfish, I'm going to make a crawfish cream sauce. Frozen crawfish don't have as good a seafood flavor as the live ones do. So I'm going to be incorporating a crawfish into like a cream sauce to kind of hide that I'm using frozen crawfish. The griddle corn cake is my base. And that's cornmeal, flour, sugar, buttermilk, eggs, maple syrup, and melted butter. And I'm gonna add some fresh corn because that's really gonna bring out the corny flavor. Chef Olivia is making like a cool play on an eggs Benedict, but it's gonna be difficult for her to execute the poached egg perfectly. She's gotta have a nice runny yolk to meld with her cream sauce and her griddle cake. Chef Savannah, is that red wine for you to drink? Yes. Cheers, you guys. Chef Savannah's drinking on the job. You know, I'm not supposed to drink on the job. Adding a lot of alcohol to it because I really want it to be like a wharf-esque dish. Here you go, guys. I think a fisherman, the smell of fish, and alcohol. So what is that technique called when you pour the uh, white wine over the live crawfish? Uh, it's not a technique. <laughs> no. So you're drinking it and then pouring it oh, in there. Oh, that's great. I don't know how I feel about that. That is just unprofessional. Isaiah, how do you like crawfish? I love my crawfish with some butter dip, with some lime inside of it. Some people are weird and they eat the brains. Makes you smarter when you eat brains. You take all the knowledge that the crawfish had. That's how Holden got so smart, he eats a lot of crawfish. <sighs> crawfish. crawfish. There you go. Raging waters. 22 minutes, the crawfish are in. Yeah, they take two minutes, so let's yeah. have a look at the Jeff Olivia. Have you ever actually been to New Orleans? I have. Now, how do you feel about having to use this, uh, the frozen crawfish here? It's going to be delicious. What is that? Prepare. They're going to go in my crawfish cream sauce. I would have loved to do a crawfish soup, but since I'm using frozen crawfish, I have to make a sauce, because you have to use cold crawfish in the soup. Watch those onions, make sure they don't burn. Collard greens are really good, and they're gonna be great on some sweet griddle corn cake. Add the tasso ham. I add some maple syrup. It's really gonna add the sweet flavor. These are gonna be the best collard greens ever made. All right, talk to me about what you got going on. So we're gonna do like a boil slash chowder. I see you got the bread here. Is that gonna be for sopping and dipping? Yes, it is. Beautiful. And we're gonna douse it in a lot of butter and seasoning. How much butter does this guy use? I love seafood-esque sort of dishes that you can dip bread in and kind of soak up all those nice garlic seasonings and that sort of that fish flavor. Now it's time to start my crawfish cream sauce. So I add my onion and my garlic to another pan. Then I'm going to add a little bit of white wine. I'm going to let that reduce because that's going to give us some sweetness. All I have to do is put some Creole seasoning and it's on deck. Hopefully that'll disguise the fact that they're frozen crawfish. Ooh, it is good. Oh, honey. Five minutes, five minutes left. Doing a perfect poached egg takes a lot of skills as a chef. I'm making a tornado into the pot of boiling water, so it's wrapping the whites around, keeping it together. It all depends on technique. Oh man, it flattened out. I was counting on the egg yolks to make a really rich sauce. If this one doesn't work, she might not be able to plate a poached egg in time. 
I cannot afford to lose to Chef Savon. Okay, chefs, time to think about plating. You have two minutes left. I'm stirring and I'm just kind of incorporating the crawfish with all the vegetables and the bottom of the garlic with the butter and the brandy and the white wine. It's just, it smells radiant. A perfect poached egg. Thank goodness, but now I have to get everything on a plate. I'm including a big piece of garlic bread because I wanted the dish to be like rustique plating. I'm a presentation freak. This big piece of hunk of bread on top of a soup bowl, who does that? One minute, chef. This is down to the wire. Make it perfect! Yes! Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Step away from the plates. Time's up. I look down at my dish. It looks stunning. I use live crawfish. She basically used some stuff out of a bag. OK, chefs, please bring your plates up to the judges. It's almost like a balancing act with that baguette. Chef Olivia, please explain your dish. We have prepared for you a grilled corn cake with collard greens and a poached egg and topped with crawfish cream sauce. I'm really scared because I'm using frozen crawfish, but I'm really trying to hide it with my sauce. Chef Olivia, you did a great job on the corn cake. You had the fresh little kernels of corn on the inside, nice little sweetness and sugar. You did a great job with your collard greens because usually they take you know, a long time to cook, so it kind of came together nice, but because you got the frozen crawfish, so you didn't really develop a lot of crawfish flavor. Thank you, Chef. Chef Olivia, I really enjoyed your dish today. I loved all the different kind of elements you had. You know, you kind of had this richness from the poached egg. I really enjoyed the griddle cake that you made. I think that you cooked it perfectly, crisping it in, in a little bit of fat like you did to get that nice crispy edge. But the presentation could have been a little bit tighter. Maybe I should have used more crawfish, because that's the main thing this round. That might bring me down, and I might lose for the prodigies. Chef Savon, please explain your dish. This is a crawfish boil with white wine, okra, a long piece of garlic bread over, herbs, and cream. Uh, Chef Savon, I um, enjoyed the approach that you were kind of like bringing the spirit of New Orleans, which is kind of like a fusion pot, it has all these different influences going on, culturally speaking. I could see that you're going there with this dish today. But unfortunately, the crawfish was overcooked. They don't take very long to cook, so it didn't really have great flavor. I like the idea of trying to go with a crawfish boil, the corn, the andouille, the crawfish, the potatoes. You get a lot of things going on in there. I think less is more for, for you, for such an experienced chef, because you keep thinking, all right, let me put some mustard, let me put some beer, let me put some brandy, let me put some tomato, let me put some herbs. So less is more. I think you could have made a better dish in like 15 minutes. There's just too much going on. You have no idea. The way the crawfish looks, the color, it's just A+. plus. Well, chefs, you made your craw daddies proud. Please give us a moment to discuss. It's always really cool to win, but it's, it would be really cool to win this one. With the disadvantage, with the crawfish dish, and against Chef Savon, of course. I've already won one. I don't see why I shouldn't win this one. And if I get another win on this one, it definitely the menu board will help out to slip a trick against my final opponent. All right, Mike, Alia, who is the winner of round two? The winner is... Chef Olivia. Olivia! I'd like to dedicate this win to my grandpa. He taught me how to fish and make <laughs> crawfish, and apparently he taught me how to do it right. Thank you. Sometimes fire isn't necessary to get things cooking, and today is a prime example of that. Our round one challenge is ceviche. I love ceviche. So ceviche is a South American dish of marinated raw fish or seafood. A good ceviche demonstrates a chef's knife skills, along with their ability to blend subtle flavors. OK, chefs, you have 30 minutes to showcase your raw talent. Yeah. <laughs> and your time starts now. That is yes. Yes. Go on. There's so many different types of ceviches, so many different combinations you can do. But you really need perfect knife cuts. A bite of a bigger chili could ruin nice. the whole dish. I'm also going to want some crunch on there. So there's a lot of different ways you can really evolve ceviche. The sky is the limit. I have not made ceviche, but you know I'm good with fish. So I'm still going to pull through and take her down. 
I am making a agua chili ceviche with saltfish and tostada. So I'm just gonna squeeze a cup of lime juice. I've made ceviche a lot. Generally running restaurants in Southern California, it tends to be a popular item. Doing a little snapper ceviche here. It's gonna have like a touch of a little Latin flair with a super creamed out avocado cilantro on the base. Crispy chips on top if I can get to it. I'm happy with the snapper choice because it does work really well with ceviche. It marinates pretty quickly and it stays really tender and juicy in the middle. Super citrus season right now, so get a bunch of the good stuff in here. Basically cooking the proteins in there, the high acid. So if you use high quality fish, just a sort of a quick cook like we're gonna do here today, we'll do the job. I'm playing squeeze out about 30 limes, but after about 10 limes, my hands are getting extremely sore. This is much more time consuming than just dumping out a bottle of lime juice. Dylan has taken seven minutes of his time doing these lines. I really I badly want to win this round. I really do. I'm making a citrus vinaigrette with some Fresno chilies and raw shallots and let my fish marinate with some caracara oranges and incorporate some of the supreme pieces of the fruit to really give the judges that nice bright pop. So I see they're cutting uh, some of the orange segments out putting them in a little ramekin for later on. Just get a little raw shallot in there. Some sliced Fresno chilies. Judges look like they can handle some heat for sure, so I'm gonna give them just a little. Okay, chefs, please bring your plates up to the judges. Chef Dylan, please explain your dish. I made a agua chili tostada using soulfish with a pineapple cucumber salsa and a lime guacamole. Chef Dylan, I like your presentation. I like that it's a, a clean, simple tostada. Uh, I love that everything's green and one color, but I also like the little pops of the, uh, of, of the marinated tomatoes. I like the fact that you chose to do a tostada. I think it's gonna be very fun to eat. I don't know how you and I are gonna share this. We might have to fight over it. <laughs> Can I break a piece off or? <laughs> yeah, it looks worthy of digging into. The judges dig into my dish. I start to get a little bit worried again because everything's just on flavor right now. I really hope the flavor tastes nice. Chef Dylan, I think you really had the right idea with this dish. Flavors were definitely there. Something that you may have struggled with is the right proportions of everything. That just killed me because I'm, I realize, well, I was using a small piece of sole and I should have gone for the bigger one. I love the tostada. I love the guacamole. I love the fresh cucumber salsa with the pineapple. The whole dish overall needed a little bit more salt especially the tostada needed more salt. It's a thick chip, you want a lot of salt on that. Um, you want to make sure you drink more margaritas um, when, when you're at the restaurant. So you gotta he think, of, he's, come on. Well, I'm eating it. <laughs> he's got time. He's not eating it, I'm drinking the margaritas. <laughs> Chef Diana, please explain your dish. I prepared a snapper ceviche with a orange Fresno chili vinaigrette and a whipped avocado mousse. Chef Diana, I think you nailed it in your presentation on this dish. I see the brightness from the chilies, the avocado, everything looks very inviting and very vibrant. I'm excited to dig in. Thank you very much. You know, yeah, it has a lot of similarities. Both of you guys went to a similar fashion. Yeah. I liked it both. I liked how you put the tortillas on top so they all stay crunchy regardless throughout the whole meal. Uh, and, the, and the richness is on the bottom. And yeah, I see a lot of seafood in there. So I'm excited to taste it. Great, thank you. I think it's gonna come down to who has enough acid and who has enough salt in their dish. Chef Diana, I really like this dish. Uh, first and foremost, I mean, it is a ceviche competition. I like that there's a lot of seafood here. I think everything was cut really well. And I think a little bit of, a uh, little bit more acidity would be really nice. But as far as that, textures were really on point in this dish and everything was really tasty. You know, I don't think fennel a lot when I'm thinking, you know, Mexican cuisine. And actually, the fennel was really a nice touch. You kept it very traditional, and you put your little touches on it. I thought it could use a little bit more salt, maybe a finishing salt, just to kind of break it in there, because you had nice chunks of fish, and the outside had a little seasoning in it. But when I got a bit into it, it wasn't enough seasoning. Just a little, little, little love on top, and it would have been right. I feel confident that I had plenty of ample salt to serve my ceviche, but he made a really good point to have that coarse texture on top. Well, chefs, you've both given us something to talk about here. So give us a minute while we make our decisions. I'm seeing a lot more fish on Diana's plate. I'm a little bit worried that the judges are gonna think the same way. I feel confident and I feel good about the portion of fish that I've provided in my tasting. And I'm really hoping that, that I have the edge over Chef Dylan because I'd love to get that advantage for the next round. So, Mike, Alia, who gets to pick an advantage from the menu board for the next round? We've decided that the advantage goes to 
Chef Diana.